In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take some HTML and CSS from CodePen and turn it into an Elementor widget. So I found this online on CodePen. CodePen is a website where you can find all sorts of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript snippets. And I really like the button and I want to add it to my website and make it editable so users can edit the link, the text, the colors, and the alignment, for example. So this is the code. I cleaned it up a little bit, but uh, now I can start using it. So I'm going inside of my WordPress website, and I have a plugin that's called Unlimited Elements installed. It's a free plugin. You can install it for free. You can find it in the plugins uh, directory just by writing unlimited elements and install and activate. Once you install and activate, uh, you can go inside of the plugin. On the left side, you have a categories list. Each category has different widgets inside of it. Right now, I'm in the hover effects category. And over here, I'm going to add, click add widget. I'm going to give my uh, widget a name. I'm going to call it animated gradient button click tab and the widget name is filled in automatically and click add widget as you can see what it does it adds a new empty thumbnail over here which is actually a widget for Elementor so right now if you're going inside of Elementor you will see this widget it will be just an empty widget with nothing inside but we have already finished the process of creating a widget even though it's empty. To fill it in and to add the HTML and CSS, we're going to double click. And over here, you have all sorts of tabs. The first tab is general. The only thing that's interesting in this tab right now is the icon, which will be the icon of the widget. So I'm just going to use this lightning bolt, for example. And the next step is going inside of the HTML. In the HTML, I'm going to copy and paste my HTML from CodePen. And I'm going into the CSS tab as well. And I'm going to copy and paste my CSS. To save, I'm going to click Update. And I'm going to jump into Elementor to see if it's working. So we're going to add a new page and click Edit with Elementor. I'm going to search for the widget, which is called Gradient Animated Gradient Button. And voila, here we go. It's over here. As you can see, it's an empty widget. It doesn't have any settings yet. The only button it has over here is Edit Widget HTML. So I'm going to use this button to quickly access the code of this button by clicking on it. What it does, it opens uh, the framework we were using earlier which is called unlimited elements on the HTML tab and you can continue navigating between the tabs but mm, what it does is just quick access to the code files of the widget which is really cool and so I'm over here again and now we want to create the settings for the button so the first basic setting I'm going to create is the um, the text for the button. So I'm going to call it button text. And each setting I add has a type. Right now, the type is good for me. So it's called text field. I don't need a different type, so I'm not going to change that. And I'm going to give a default value. What a default value is, it's the value of the field on the initial addition of the widget to the page. So it means like when we're going to add this widget to the page, this will be the text of the button, the first text. You can later on edit it, of course. Going back into the HTML tab, and I'm going to replace the static text with the attribute I created. So on the right side, over here, we can see a list of all the attributes. 
So this is the attribute we've just added. The blue ones are the ones uh, that you add. And I'm going to click on it, and it will replace the static text with a dynamic field. Click Save. Go back into Elementor. Let's save over here as well. Let's refresh the page. And I'm going to click on the button. And as you can see, we've added a field, a custom field. So now um, we can edit this and see that it's changing live in the Elementor editor. Let's continue to the next fields that we want to add. So before, actually before we're going to continue to the next field, I want to open this one again. And over here we have a checkbox. What this checkbox does, it adds the style tab. Right now the style tab is missing. So let's see what it does by adding it. Update attribute, update the widget, and let's refresh the page. Click on the widget to edit, and now we have a style tab. If we go into the style tab, we can see we have all the typography settings that we usually want to have when having a text field. So I'm going to enable the styles. I'm going to go into to typography, and let's change the font to Pacifico which is a cursive font. Cool, that looks great. And of course, you can change any one of the settings over here, and it will change, including color and stuff like that. Great. So we've gone over the basic field, which is a text field, and now we're going to do some more advanced fields. The next field we're going to do is a link field. So I'm going to click Add Attribute. The first thing you're going to want to do is change the attribute type. So I'm going to change that to link. I'm going to give it a name and a default value. Inside of the HTML, this field has a two-step process. The first step is replacing the href, which is actually the link itself. As you can see, this is the attribute with, that we've added. So I'm just going to add it over here and the next step is adding the link attributes the link attributes are the follow no follow and the target and uh, open a new window or uh, blank or whatever so we add that after the href not inside of the href but after the href i will also show you inside of elementor what exactly that line does. So we're going back into Elementor, refresh, click over here, and now we have a link field. So of course you can use the dynamic uh, if you want to do an internal link inside of your website. And this is the link options. The link options is the open a new window and add no follow. That uh, will work only if you added the link HTML attributes. Perfect. So we're done with the link. And now uh, we can go into the CSS values that we want to change. So let's see what's going on over here. Um, we have padding, which is cool. And we have the gradient color, which we will want also to change. And we have alignment of the button so maybe someone right now it's aligned to the middle but maybe someone will want to align it to the left or to the right so let's start uh, with this one the text alignment and I'm going back into attributes I'm going to add a new attribute I'm going to choose an attribute type of drop down and I'm going to give it a name of alignment over here in the options, we have the labels of the options and the value that will be outputted inside of the attribute. So both of these are going to be the same each time, but you should know that it can be different. The label doesn't matter, it's just uh, for the user, and the value is what outputs inside of the attribute. And I'm going to add another option 
So the drop down attribute is really comfortable for having something that has a multiple choice that you can choose something from a list. Going into the CSS and what we're going to do is replace the center with the attribute alignment. So now whatever a user chooses will inject over here. Let's test this out. Click on to edit and cool we have alignment it's a drop down and if we change it we can see that it's taking effect. Works great. Let's continue to the next attribute. The next attribute will be a padding attribute. So let's see how that works. Attributes. Oh, I'm on the wrong tab. Attributes. Add attribute. Let's choose padding and give it a name. Let's give some default values. So for example, top 10, right 40, bottom 10, and left 40. Over here, this attribute works a bit differently from the other ones. And the way it works is that we only need to give a CSS selector. So I'm just going to save this for a second, go back into the HTML, check what my CSS selector is, go back into attributes, and over here, I'm going to give it the selector. So dot class name. This is the selector, the CSS selector that selects the uh, exact element on the page. Click update attribute. And inside of the CSS, we can take off the padding. So we don't have any CSS collision. Let's check that it's working and that we have done everything pop properly. Save before. Click and over here we have the padding setting. So if we're going to change it, you can see it change it changes live. You can unlock and give different values for the right and left very cool let's save and go back into the editor and I think the only thing that we have left is the uh, colors so the way this works is that it has two colors and uh, the first one and the second one and then the first one and maybe let's do three colors so you can go from one to the second to the third in this case, they used the first one twice, so it's just going back to the same color, but uh, we will use three different colors. So inside of the attributes, we have something that's called a color attribute, color picker. And I'm going to say color one, give it a value. And we can duplicate it change it to color 2, give it a value, and duplicate again, color 3, and save, and go back into the HTML, in the CSS, sorry. So over here, we're going to change the first color to color one, the second color to color two, and the third color, which I don't see right now. Let's just make sure that we've added it. Oh, maybe I need to, oh, here it is. Let's go back into the CSS. Oh, I need to scroll down. Okay, perfect. So color three, Update, go back into Elementor, refresh, and that looks pretty good. Let's just change this color maybe to something pink. Okay, that's cool. 
that's pretty cool. You can play around with the colors. Okay. So I think we've gone all over all of the settings that we would like to have in a button. Now, there is one more issue that I want to go over, which is having two instances of the same widget on a page. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And I want to show you that when I change the color for the first one, we have a problem. The colors aren't changing. The reason for that is that uh, the CSS selector that we were working with is an ID. And right now, both the buttons have the same ID. So we thought of a solution for this, and we need to start from the HTML. In the HTML, we want to change the static ID to a dynamic ID from the right hand side over here, which is called UCID. It's not enough to change this in the HTML, you're going to want to change this also in the CSS. So everywhere we have an ID selector, we need to replace it to a dynamic ID. Now, each instance of the widget on the page will get its own ID and there won't be any conflicts between them. Well, that's pretty ugly. Okay. So that's about it. I just want to show you a quick cool tip uh, about gradients that's not related to Elementor or not related to widget creation, but I think it's pretty cool. There is a website that's called Gradient UI. If you go to it, it shows you all sorts of cool gradients. If you click show uh, all gradients and you can find very nice gradients that work really cool and uh, you can implement them in uh, your design. So if this gradient suits your uh, website colors, you can click on each color, go back into Elementor and you can uh, paste it over here where the hex value is. So I use this tool a lot because I'm not so good at picking colors, but when I can see them, uh, see an example of how it will output, uh, it really helps me out in, in my web designs. So as you can see, that's looking pretty cool. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have questions or suggestions, you can contact me. And see you next time, I guess. So bye-bye. Have a great uh, 2020 year.